Okay, welcome to another example. This time the example is quite similar to the previous example I made up, right? It's, I still have a half a um, kilogram of, that was air before, now it's steam, okay? And I give you the temperature, uh, pressure and I give you the temperature, fairly elevated temperature, right? Goes through an isobaric, again, you have to be very careful when reading this, isobaric, which means constant pressure, right? Compression in a frictionless, sealed piston cylinder device. If the final state is saturated vapor, find the work done in this compression process. Okay, so this is steam, and I have steam tables available to me. I do not want you to use the ideal gas law. Okay, I would like you to use the steam tables whenever I gave you some type of a steam. Okay, so as I did in the previous case as well, I'm gonna go ahead and write my state states. I know that state one is equal to P is 200 kilopascals, right? That's given to me, and T is 150 Celsius um, in this uh, particular case. And what about state two? Well, the state two says that it is gonna be P is equal to still the same because it's an isobaric process and this is a saturated vapor. That's what I have. So 100% saturated vapor, 0% saturated liquid, obviously, right? So, okay. Okay, so as I mentioned in the previous question too, so what is uh, the work done in this type of a process, okay? So that is given to me as P times fairly simple V2 minus V1. So PV, P times delta V will give me the work done on the system or by the system, okay? So we, we covered this. This is N times uh, specific volume, right? Okay, P is constant. Then you can see this is gonna be, you know, N times specific volume one. So I can take this M out of the parentheses. So I get myself specific volume two minus specific volume one. M is known, so this is 200,000. This is 0 0.5, so I know those, but I don't know these two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the tables given at the back of the book to find this uh, specific volume two and specific volume one. So let's start in the order it's given. Let's start with state one. Actually state two is easier. Okay, here is the question, um, in, you know, uh, I had a video on that one, like how am I going to proceed? So my recommendation in these kind of questions is to find out where am I? Am I in the superheated region? Am I in the, you know, mixture region? Am I in the compressed liquid region? I don't know that, right? So I want to plot actually just to illustrate you. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. So it is P and, uh, you know, specific uh, volume. Let's say this is my graph, right? and a constant t and this time on it is uh, 150 but this is what i want i want to look at the 200 kilopascal that is given to me right so i want to look at the case where basically like this okay so my goal just to explain what, I, what my thought process is and this is not the only solution okay this is just a solution is as i mentioned to you before I am looking at these two cases, it's kind of important to me, okay? So if, um, and my temperature is given, right? This T is, I can't find it from tables, and my temperature is 150. So my question is, is 150 like this or like this, right? So that I don't know, am I above it or am I below it? That part I don't know. So what I can do though, is I can go to Chang'e 9th edition and table A5 and find my you know, because this is saturated pressure, right? This is given as 200 kilopascals. So now I can go back and I can check my saturated temperature that corresponds to that particular saturated pressure. And I do read it as 120.21 um, Celsius, okay? Um, and again, this is from A5. So, okay, so now this temperature, so this particular graph that I have here, turns out to be for 120.21 degrees, which is lower than the 150 given to me. So in reality then, if I draw the uh, constant temperature line on a PV diagram for a, 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 a temperature greater than the saturation temperature, it's gonna look like this. Okay, let's use another color actually. Let's use red, so we didn't use red. So something like that, I don't know exactly where, but it's gonna be above it, okay? So it's gonna be like this, something. Obviously, they're not gonna intersect over here, disregard that, okay? Uh, okay, so then I am looking at, this is my 150. So this is my, the red one is the 150. So this is 150 degrees C line, okay? 
So now you can see the intersection of 200 uh, Pascal, kilopascal rather, this is in kilopascal terminology, is right this point, right? So let's just mark that point. So actually this is the point that I am, uh, you know, given, okay? And you can clearly see that this is superheated vapor, right? So then what I have to do is I have to go to table A6, okay? And I look at that particular superheated vapor uh, table, and I find this P is equal to 200 kilopascal case, and I find T is equal to 150, and I was lucky I was able to find what I need, and I find my specific volume 1 as 0 0.95986 meter cube per kilogram. Okay, so I was able to find, I'm looking back over here, so now I know this. So now the next question is what is uh, V2? Actually, you will see it's a little bit more uh, easier this way around because I gave you the uh, constant uh, pressure or saturation pressure in this particular case, 200 kilopascal, and I have a saturated vapor. So I go to simply table A5, right? That's actually where that I got this information, right? So actually, this if you look at the temperature, it's 120.21 for this particular case, right? I'm actually right. I'm I'm looking at this point. Right? That's what the question is asking you. Saturated vapor, 100%. The X is equal to 1, right? So then I look at the VG, you know, VG information, and it's listed there as 0 0.88. 578 meter cube per kilogram. Okay, so that's good. And I simply write back this in. V is 200,000. I'm going to write get in terms of a joule. If you prefer, you can write 200 and you get a kilo joule. The mass is 0 0.5 kilograms, and this is pascals, which is Newton per meter square, right? Times the specific volume 2, which I'm simply copying. Uh, obviously, this is specific 2, right? Um, 0 0.88578 minus 0 0.95986. Obviously, the unit of it is going to be meter cubed per kilogram, okay? Um, Again, let's write Newton per meter square in here just to see the units. So you can see this kilograms can cancel. Meter square, meter cube becomes meter. Newton meter is joule. So I'm onto something over here. When I type this into my calculator, I get minus 7,408 joules. Okay. Again, if you want, you can 7.4 kilojoules work that I have to put in for this to happen. Okay. Thank you for watching this.